Today we're going to be talking about a new technique known as the VILD technique, the visually induced lucid dreaming technique. Now this technique is a little different to the other ones uh, because it's not going to involve you having to wake up at a certain time in the morning like so the other ones where you know you'd have to interrupt your sleep after six hours uh, and have a lucid dream like at 4 or 5 a.m. right now these techniques are great and they really do work but they can interrupt your sleep you can feel tired you know you um, you have to actually wake up early at a certain time and you have to do these techniques and it really takes a lot of effort and determination to do these whereas the technique I'm going to be showing you today is much more natural it's a much more um, it's much easier to do it long term and once you really learn this one you can you'll find that you'll naturally have lucid dreams like three four times a week without having to really try I mean obviously you still have to do the things during the day but you don't have to wake up at a certain time in the morning uh, and you don't have to ruin your sleep in that way so without much further delay the visually induced lucid dreaming technique is all about planning a dream in advance so and I don't know if you've seen Inception but in Inception uh, they plan the dream levels out they literally design the dream that they're gonna have before they go into it and the reason they do this is so that they can populate it with their subconscious without actually having to create it while they're there they create it beforehand and then they just go in and have what could be interpreted as a lucid dream without much effort and it's sort of the same thing obviously inception's fiction but this is this is how it works right so you're going to design the dream level the the location everything in the dream you're going to design it in the day and then you're going to go into it in the night time when you actually dream so what this means is because you're already planning you're already telling your subconscious what the dream's going to be about and how you know what's going to be in it you don't need to spend that effort doing that when you have a lucid dream now i know a lot of you are thinking well you don't spend any effort doing it right well you don't and technically you can experience a lucid dream as you create it but what happens is you're more likely to wake up if you don't know the layout of the dream right if you just enter a lucid dream it can be fleeting sometimes and it can just sort of fade away uh, and one of the reasons for that is that you don't know or you didn't know what the dream was going to be about you didn't know where it was going to be so you were sort of exploring somewhere new and that does two things it makes you too excited because you don't know what to expect so it's all like new to you uh, and also it uses your it uses a bit of energy it uses a bit of mental power to sort of make the dream design the dream as you're there right and subconsciously that does wake you up more often than not so the visually induced lucid dreaming technique it's all about planning the dream before so you know what to expect and because you know what to expect because you know what you're going to dream about you are less likely to wake up and it's less likely to you know fade away so here's how you do it one second so the idea is this you create the dream in your mind you imagine what you want it to be like but you're going to distill it to the simplest version of that dream so say if you wanted to to have a lucid dream where you're on a beach the most basic version or idea of that is you on a beach so that's all you need to remember don't get so concerned with like the details of the beach or how it feels or what the weather's like that will come later you'll be able to naturally like create that as you go just focus on the one thing you're on a beach okay and that's all you need to remember so when you imagine it just imagine yourself on a beach and instead of trying to design the beach okay just let yourself explore the beach in the daytime when you're practicing this so the idea is you practice this during the day like maybe 10 15 times as you would do a reality check during the day you just practice like you sit down and you think right I'm gonna dream about being on a beach and you go through it in your mind, you literally rehearse it, you practice imagining the dream before you even attempt to have it. <clears throat> and this sort of lets the idea sink into your subconscious mind, the idea of being on a beach in a dream. Now this is that's the first step. The second step is that when you imagine yourself on the beach or wherever it is, in the forest, on a train, in a room, uh, you need to imagine a reality check is built into that dream, right? Now, I know this is going to sound confusing, but bear with me, it won't take long to explain. So, normally you'll do a reality check separately to imagining a dream, right? You'll do, for example, you'll pinch your nose and try to breathe, you'll try and push your finger through your palm, 
but try and look at your watch and see if the numbers change, right? These are normal reality checks. With the visually induced lucid dreaming technique, with the vials, you're going to imagine the reality check is already part of the dream you're imagining. So, and it, I know it sounds confusing, the easiest way to explain it is with an example. So, imagine you're on a beach, okay, and in the, in the sky you see, written in the clouds, you're dreaming. The words, you are dreaming, literally right in there in the clouds. And that is going to cause you, when you see it, and when you imagine it, to think, oh, I'm dreaming, I must be lucid. So, right from the start, okay, when you're actually imagining the dream to begin with, you imagine yourself as lucid in the dream. And that's the key difference between this and the wake induced lucid dream technique. That and the fact that you're practicing this during the day before actually sleeping. Okay. So, every time you imagine the dream, imagine yourself doing a reality check in it, uh, which is part of the dream. So, another example would be let's say if you were, your dream scene that you're imagining is you're on a train. Okay. And on the train, instead of normal seats, there's like rows and rows of beds. And on each of these beds, you see yourself sleeping and dreaming. Uh, and then when the announcer calls out the next station, it says you're dreaming or you're lucid. So hopefully this makes sense. Like the, the dream you're meant to be imagining has to incorporate a reality check. It has to literally prompt you to become lucid so that when you have the dream, you will naturally become lucid because the dream is literally telling you. The dream is literally saying you're dreaming in one way or another. It could be like, writing in the clouds it could be you imagine your friend telling it to you or it could be you seeing yourself sleeping on a train whatever the idea and you can get creative with it the idea is that you're going to incubate the dream you want to have by imagining yourself already lucid in it so hopefully that does make a little bit of sense i know it's one of the more confusing techniques right but it doesn't come without a reward it's one of the more difficult techniques to do and it will be difficult but when you master it, and when you actually can do it effectively, you'll be able to stay in the dream longer, right? Because like we said before, you've already practiced the scene. <clears throat> and that means that you're able to stay in it longer because you will have already practiced being there. Your subconscious mind knows that you're on a beach, right? So you don't need to spend any effort creating it. That being said, the further away you go from the start of the dream, from the one you've been practicing, the further away you go from that, the more likely you are to wake up, right? So if you incubate a dream where you're on a train, and then you get off the train, the further away you go from the scene you've already practiced being in, uh, the less likely you are to stay lucid. So if you want to stay in the dream for longer, you need to sort of stay in the same area that you've been rehearsing, the same area you've been uh, practicing and imagining, okay? And I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, I don't know the scientific reason for that, but I just know from experience that every time I've done it, and I've done this particular technique a few dozen times at least, uh, so it's not one of my most practiced techniques, but I've done it at least a few dozen times. And I find that the further away I go from the scene I've been practicing, the less likely I am to stay lucid, and most of the time uh, I'll have a normal lucid dream from then. Right? But if I stay in the area, if I stay in whatever place I've been imagining, then I can stay lucid for what feels like a lot longer. Okay, And obviously, your experience of time in a lucid dream is always going to be a bit subjective. right? So maybe I didn't literally stay in the dream longer, but it felt like it. And that's what matters. It literally felt like I was in the dream for longer just because I was staying in that area. So I don't know whether this is like placebo effect, whether it's just because I thought I would, but it definitely felt like it. So the best you can do is just try it out, see what happens for you. And that's the end of this technique, the vials, the visually incubated. Oh yeah, and people sort of, you can call it either the visually induced lucid dream or the visually incubated lucid dream. They mean the same thing. Uh, the vial technique is very similar to the wild, the wake induced, but it's the key difference is you're going to imagine the place during the day and then practice it. Okay, uh, one more step you can add in if you want to, right? <clears throat> is so you're practicing visualizing the dream scene throughout the day, and when you do that, you're ideally you're going to sit down, close your eyes, and sort of imagine the scene with the reality check involved, right? 
almost like a daydream. Another step you can do is you can physically draw out the dream scene with the reality check involved and sort of study that piece of paper, that drawing, before you visualise it. And I think the blog post I wrote about this uh, on my site, howtolucid.com, actually explains that you'll want to draw the, the dream scene and then keep the drawing under your pillow. Now, the reason you keep the drawing under your pillow is not really for any scientific reason. It's not going to help it enter your mind anymore. But what it will do is it will serve as almost like a, a self-fulfilling prophecy or almost like a placebo effect. And you should never underestimate the power of a placebo effect. Okay, uh, If you think it will help, then it will. And that's the main thing here. It, it's going to make it feel more important by putting the drawing under your pillow. The idea of incubating a dream that you choose will feel more important and more uh, more likely, right? So experiment with it. Maybe it works better for you that way. Maybe it doesn't. You'll only know if you try it out. So please go ahead and like this video. Leave a comment as well, uh, letting me know what you think. I know a lot of you thought that my intro was quite cool, so I'm going to be including that in every video now, uh, the intro logo animation thing you saw. Uh, and yeah. That's it guys. If you liked this video, please subscribe and I'll see you next time.